Good evening everybody, welcome back to the channel. How y'all doing? Um, yeah, uh, this one is something that someone's mentioned to me that I need to check out. Uh, apparently, it's something that a lot of British reaction channels uh, like to check out. Apparently it's quite popular to do. Uh, it's the Star Spangled Banner, as you've never heard it. Now, I know what the what it sounds like, you know, how when it's played at like sporting events. Oh, I say can you see, you know that one. So, I don't know what to expect with this, so, I guess, yeah, we just get into it. I don't know much about the history of the American National Anthem, except that we made it. Like, we wrote it or something, or British settlers wrote it. Like, I, I, I think that's true. So, yeah, we'll get into this. Um... And see what it's all about. I'm looking forward to it. So if you enjoy this, make sure you like, subscribe for more. Um, I want to do more content like this. You know, more American content. It's been very Scottish centralised, my sort of content trend. So I would like to do some more American stuff. I did a high school football thingy a couple of weeks ago. I think it was best high school football entrances. I was blown away by that. You know, the fact that these, these college... the they're not college kids not high school college kids were playing at stadiums that hold like 100,000 people and I was like what you know so yeah if uh, if American people find this and start recommending stuff I'll do it because you know America's a great country with a, a great history and we were, we grew up in American culture us British kids well my generation did all my favourite films were American and favourite actors were American so yeah f come to the channel recommend more stuff like this and we'll do it I like to learn let's do this There was a lawyer once, his name was Francis Scott Key. He penned a song that I'm sure you're aware of, you've seen it, it's in most hymnals throughout our churches, it's called the National Anthem. It is our song as an American. We go, however, to a ball game, we stand in our church services and we sing the words of that song and they float over our minds and our lips and we don't even realize what we're singing. Most of us have memorized it as a child, but we've never really thought about what it means. Let me tell you a story. Francis Scott Key was a lawyer in Baltimore. The colonies were engaged in vicious conflict. That's us, isn't it? We were responsible for that. Is that the White House being set on fire? We did that. We burned it down. With the mother country, Britain. Because of this conflict and the protractedness of it, they had accumulated prisoners on both sides. The American colonies had prisoners and the British had prisoners. And the American government initiated a move. They went to the British and they said, let us negotiate for the release of these prisoners. They said, we want to send a man out to discuss this with you. They were holding the American prisoners in boats about a thousand yards offshore. And they said, we want to send a man by the name of Francis Scott Key. He will come out and negotiate to see if we can make a mutual exchange. On the appointed day in a rowboat, he went out to this boat and he negotiated with the British. Is that Lord Nelson? He only had one arm. Is that Lord Nelson? Wow. Mind you, it's that, sort of that time, isn't it? 1800, yeah. Pretty sure Lord Nelson, that's when he was doing his, when he was around. British officials. Hero. And they reached a conclusion that men could be exchanged on a one-for-one -one basis. Wow. Francis Scott Key, jubilant with the fact that he'd been successful, went down below in the boats, and what he found was a cargo hold full of humanity, men. And he said, men, I've got news for you tonight, you're free. He said, tonight I have negotiated successfully your return to the colonies. He said, you'll be taken out of this boat, out of this filth, out of your chains. As he went back up on board to arrange for their passage to the shore, the admiral came and he said, we have a slight problem. He said, we will still honor our commitment to release these men, but it'll be merely academic after tonight. It won't matter. And Francis Scott Key said, what do you mean? He said, well, Mr. Key, he said, tonight we have laid an ultimatum upon the colonies. Your people will either capitulate and lay down the colors of that flag that you think so much of, 
or you see that fort right over there, Fort Henry? He said, we're going to remove it from the face of the earth. He said, how are you going to do that? He said, if you will, scan the horizon of the sea. And as he looked, he could see hundreds of little dots. And he said, that's the entire British war fleet. Wow. He said, all of the gunpowder, all of the armament is being called upon to demolish that fort. It will be here within striking distance in a matter of about two and a half hours. He said, the war is over. These men would be free anyway. He said, you can't shell that fort. He said, that's, that's a large fort. He said, it's full of women and children. He says, it's predominantly not a military fort. He said, don't worry about it. They said, we've left them a way out. And he said, what's that? He said, do you see that flag way up on the rampart? He said, we have told them that if they will lower that flag, the shelling will stop immediately. And we'll know that they've surrendered and you'll now be under British rule. You know, it's funny hearing all this. It is incredible. But we know how it all ends. I mean, America won, obviously. But it's just incredible to hear stories like this. It's one of the most fascinating periods of history or types of history, American history, in that century, in the 19th century. It's just this so much stuff to learn about and hear about. It's incredible. I could watch videos like this all day. Who is it that's t telling us this story, though? Because it sounds like this is um, like a speech to maybe, you know, when um, universities graduate, they'll get someone to come in and make a speech like Jim Carrey did. He went over to, was it India or somewhere, and he gave a speech to a, a, a school. It's one of the best speeches you'll ever hear. It's on YouTube. And he went and gave a speech to the graduates of that year, the ones that graduated. So who is this speaking now? It sounds familiar, but I don't know why. Rendered. Does it say? D no, don't play on TV. Go away. No, it doesn't. Right, okay, never mind. Carry on. And you'll sure. now be under British rule. Lower your flag and we know you Francis Scott Key went down below and told the men what was about to happen. That, that has such a, such a symbolism to it, doesn't it? When you lower that flag, it means you've surrendered and you'll be under British rule. So it's like the country, literally, the main logo, if you will, that tells you this is, this is the United States of America. When that falls, the country falls, basically. Wow. Such symbolism in that. And they said, how many ships? He said, hundreds. Hundreds. The ships got closer. Francis Scott Key went back up on top and he said, men, I'll shout down to you what's going on as we watch. As twilight began to fall and as the haze hung over the ocean as it does at sunset, suddenly the British war fleet unleashed. <coughs> He says the sound was deafening. There were so many guns that there were no reliefs. He said it was absolutely impossible to talk or hear. He said suddenly the sky, although dark, was suddenly lit. And he says from down below, all he could hear the men, the prisoners, saying was, Tell us where the flag is. Wow. What have they done with the flag? They just want to know. Wow. Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us! You see, it's stories like that that make history come alive. That gives you a real sense of the people back then, what they were like, you know. You can tell this sensational story of they started shelling the hell out of it and all that. And all these guys wanting to know was, what's happening with the flag? Is it still up? Oh, I love hearing stuff like that, little anecdotes like that. It just, oh, it's, it, it's, it's beautiful. Is the flag still flying over the rampart? Tell us! Wow. One hour, two hours, three hours into the shelling. Every time the bomb would explode and it would be close to the flag, they could see the flag in the illuminated red glare of that bomb. And Francis Scott Key would report down to the men below, it's still up. It's not down. 
The admiral came and he said, your people are insane. He said, what's the matter with them? He said, don't they understand this is an impossible situation? Francis Scott Key said, he remembered what George Washington had said. He said, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from all other people in the world is he will die on his feet before he'll live on his knees. Oh, that is one of the greatest quotes in history. And yeah, I have heard that one before. I just haven't heard it for a while. It's just suddenly jogged my memory. Yeah, the thing that sets the American Christian apart from any other person in the world is that he will die on his feet long before he'll live on his back, on his on his knees. Such power in that statement. Wow. Oh. <laughs> he'll live on his knees. The Admiral said, we have now instructed all of the guns to focus on the rampart to take that flag down. He said, we don't understand something. Our reconnaissance tells us that that flag has been hit directly again and again and again, and yet it's still flying. It's we don't understand there. that. But he said, now we're about to bring every gun for the next three hours to bear on that point. Francis Scott, he said the barrage was unmerciful. All that he could hear was the men down below praying. The prayer. God, keep that flag flying where we last saw it. Sunrise came. He said there was a heavy mist hanging over the land, but the rampart was tall enough. There stood the flag completely nondescript in shreds. The flagpole itself was at a crazy angle, but the flag was still at the top. Francis Scott Key went aboard and immediately went into Fort Henry to see what had happened. And what he found had happened was that that flagpole and that flag had suffered repetitious direct hits. And when hit had fallen, but men, fathers, who knew what it meant for that flag to be on the ground, although knowing that all of the British guns were trained on it, walked over and held it up wow. humanly until they died. Their bodies were removed and others took their place. Francis Scott Key said what held that flagpole in place at that unusual angle were Patriots' bodies. He penned the song, Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light. That's, that's how it came about. Why... Why is this the first time I'm hearing about this? This... That flag was being held up by... Soldiers. And when one got hit... They just pulled the body of... The soldier that died away and then someone else took his place and held that flagpole up. Just to keep their spirits up. Those men locked in the holds on those boats. That is sacrifice on a different level. <sighs> Patriots bodies. And the song. Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Or the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that the flag was still there. Oh say, does that star-spangled banner yet fly and wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? 
The debt was demanded. The price, it was paid. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets break the bombs bursting in just another incredible example of America, you know, in the face of disaster, whatever it may be. You can point to so many different examples of things like this happening. I mean, 9-11 is a prime example. You saw a different dimension of humanity on that day. You just watch, you know, the any the documentaries on the aftermath, and <clears throat> you know you've got people that had been awake for forty eight hours, still digging through Ground Zero, looking for whatever they could find. World War Two, you know, the stories from D Day, and just that sense of. I will never give up for that flag, sort of thing. It's it's, ch it's chilling, but that is wow, what a story. So I wonder why. I thought that we had something to do with it. You know, we wrote it or something. I'm, or am I thinking of something else? I mean, basically, America is, as you'll know it now, we're British people, we're basically responsible for it all anyway, because white Americans are British people. You know, you, they just are. You didn't just turn up. Before, you know, the British went over there, and now it's turned into what it is today. 
So anything that Americans have done, British, it's basically British people with a different accent. But, you know, wow, wow. <laughs> that is that is an incredible story. I, I need to see the original video of that. Whoever was telling it and where it was telling it, because it's it was obvious that there's a crowd because they started cheering and um, you know when he said certain parts of it. Yeah, I need to see that fully. But that was amazing. I'm really glad I watched that because that's something everybody needs to needs to watch. They need to play this in every school in America because America's an absolute mess right now with. The lack of patriotism, it's disgusting. And things that are going on over there, it's just... It's it's in a mess. People need to st rem start being reminded from a young age again which country you represent, know where you come from, you know, you, you're an American. You're a citizen of the most powerful country in the world, with one of the be most proud histories in the world. You need to show them this, and let show remind them where that comes from. God, I, I can just imagine, like, if World War Three kicked off. This is the video that I'd play for my... If I was a general, I'd play this for my soldiers before every battle, because it would just... Give them such a kick up the backside to fight, if, if American general, I mean, to fight for that flag like nothing else would. <sighs> Amazing. Um, yeah. That was something, that was special. <laughs> such a deep symbolism to it. You know, when you were talking about those men that were prisoners of war, British held in a British ship didn't know whether they were going to be allowed to survive or what another way to know was is that, is that flag still standing and the minute that they did knock it down the soldiers lifted it up again knowing that they're, you know, they're aiming their cannons at that area where the flag is but they went to hold it up anyway knowing that Hundreds of British ships have got their cannons aimed right where they're standing, holding that thing up. That's just... Talk about, you know, you talk about you fight for your country. That is fighting for your country. <sighs> you know. I mean, I'm not a soldier, so I don't really have the right to say, but you... People who join the army and become, I don't know, a chef... I'm, yeah, I mean, each chefs, but if they're going around saying, oh, yeah, I fight for my country every day, and then you've got these guys giving their lives just so that flag stays in the air, that is fighting for your country. That is one of the greatest stories of American spirit and patriotism I've ever heard. And I want to hear more. So when this starts reaching, like, Americans and people who like to see these sort of videos, I want you to start recommending more stuff like this. I want to see more stuff like this. There must be so many stories out there. Let's hear them. I might make it a series on the Patreon as well. We've got like a, a documentary series. So I could I suppose I could add it to that. But let's try and keep it on YouTube for now because, yeah, wow. That was amazing. So, like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and as I said, recommend more content like this because I want to see it. And, um, yeah, we'll do it. So, yeah, I guess all that's left to say is thanks for watching and God bless America.